Good morning, thanks everyone. Um, at about 5.47 a.m. this morning, police responded to a call for assistance at the Franklin Street bus depot. Uh, the driver of a Grant's company bus um, advised that there was a large intoxicated male on the bus who wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, police responded uh, and um, approached the male on the bus and uh, offered him assistance to leave. Uh, he refused to leave and when police um, tried to ask, uh, get him up to leave, he's punched a female police officer in the face. And that has led to quite a significant altercation on the bus between police and the male. During that altercation, the male has been, uh, police have been able to uh, move the male forward in the bus and he's then taken a position in the driver's seat. The bus was running um, and there was real concerns at that time that the male would drive the bus away and he in fact had made attempts to get the bus into drive. Um, police, uh, other police responded to assist um, and uh, during a series of um, use of force they tried uh, to um, uh, use OC spray which had no effect. They've used a taser several times which had no effect. Um, and at one point they used a dog to try and um, get the male out of the driver's seat because there was real concerns that, um, that he was going to drive the bus away with the occupants on the bus. Ultimately, with the use of um, other police, they were able to drag the male off the bus and he was arrested on the footpath outside the bus. Um, police then triaged all the passengers on the bus through to the Franklin Street, Street Terminal and provided them support and assistance as uh, some were suffering very mild impact of OC spray and one passenger uh, required um, decontamination with water to the face. Ambulance and fire brigade attended to assist police um, and uh, ultimately uh, police held a, a, a meeting with the 26 passengers and uh, provided some instruction advice about what had occurred and the impact of um, the OC spray and who to report it to if they have any issues. Um, and uh, the luggage that they had with them on the bus was returned to the passengers and they were able to be put on another bus. Uh, the male is currently at the Flint, uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital uh, for a medical assessment and he'll be cha facing charges for assaulting the, the uh, four police officers. Um, and attempting to steal the bus. Uh, the two police officers uh, have, two, two police officers have been assessed at hospital. One has, uh, was x-rayed for a potential broken jaw and she is clear of the broken jaw and she's able to go home to her family. The other male uh, suffered a significant gouge to the eye and then um, due to what was occurring at the scene, OC spray then entered the um, eye so that was significantly painful. That police officer has uh, been scanned at the hospital and there is um, uh, no long-term damage to the eye and he's been allowed to um, go home with his family. Two other police officers uh, suffered punches um, and kicks, but they're okay. How would you describe the, uh, the actions of the police in this situation? Oh, well, yeah, so... Um, so um, the police actions, my, my understanding of everything, everyone I've spoken to have been very professional. In fact, um, we've even gone through the early conversation with the male and the early conversation with the uh, between the police and the male was, you know, come on mate, you're not supposed to be here. Can we get you some help? Can we take you somewhere? Is there anyone we can call? Where do you want to go? And that has very quickly escalated due to b the behaviour of the male to a violent confrontation where the male has in fact assaulted a police officer by punching her in the face several times. How long is the process going to take to eventually get the suspect down? Uh, so initially it was two police followed by um, a state duty officer and a dog handler uh, and then other police have attended the scene. Um, some have had to come out of the fight due to impact of OC spray and injuries and others have come in but it's a very, it is a very difficult situation. If you, you picture the actual front of a bus, the driver's in an elevated position and, and um, it's a very confined space. And the male had actually interlocked his arm in the, drive, in the um, steering wheel and was holding on to a grab handle. So it's very difficult, he's quite large, uh, very difficult to get him out of that. How common is it for like a taser and an OC spray to be ineffective during an arrest? Um, so, uh, OC spray um, 
is probably more common to, to not have an effect um, and it, that can be due to um, someone's resilience to it or that, that they've had it before. Um, so in fact the police officers were able to continue um, to, to work on this male while they were in fact affected by the, by the OC spray. So you can overcome OC spray by being quite motivated. Um, and as for the taser, it, it, it's very rare, um, but the more effectiveness, uh, the more effective the taser is, is the further you are away and the spread of the barbs. And if you are quite close, it really just becomes pain compliance rather than any sort of disruption to person's ability to function. Uh, a, witness, a witness told us that in that initial struggle with the two officers, that the man attempted to grab one of the officer's handguns and she stopped him doing that. Is that the case? Yeah, that's correct. Well, is this you know, female officer extremely brave, heroic for you know, stopping this man from actually getting a gun? Uh, so, um, look, uh, she's a very determined and professional police officer. Um, she's very resilient, um, but it, it is very confronting for all police when someone uh, grabs a gun and, and she's done what she's been trained to do. Is the fake drugs are involved? Sorry? Is the fake drugs are involved? So the... Pa the the defenders at hospital for a medical assessment. Um, uh, the information from the scene is he's, he's, he's affected by something, alcohol or drugs. And we believe that the police dog, when that, it went in with his hand, that it was attacked as well. Yeah, the, the dog was punched and kicked as well and, and retreated. Yep. And how's the dog? The dog's okay. Yeah, the dog's at home with the handler. The dog's okay. Yep. Has the dog been evacuated? Uh, no, the dog's at home with the handler. The handlers are, are, are as you would imagine, a very intimate knowledge of their dogs and they would be very quick to take it to a vet if there was a need but they also have a lot of knowledge about how to fix a dog themselves support a dog themselves yeah speaking of the eastern LA, um, LA, that franklin street bus area that sort of that can be a bit troublesome i imagine but at times with i look I, I don't i don't think i think um even the bus driver reported earlier on the news through i think channel nine that i'd seen that um that he'd not seen anything like this in 20 years in, of his career so right. i don't i don't i think if he's saying you've got a bus driver who's doing this every day saying he's never seen anything like this i think it's quite rare like I, I think i think it's probably important something like this just to focus on this incident and it's you know it's significant in that it's it's so unique, um, and I've I've not heard of anything like this happening before, and and uh, you know the uniqueness of it made it very difficult for the police. You know they're, they're trying to deal with a male in very close confines on a, on a bus, while considering the safety of the public who are on the bus, um, and the real risk that if he was to take that bus away, what what could potentially happen? Would it crash? What could it crash into others? You know, there was a there's real concern there about what potentially could happen, um, and uh, you know I think their their actions are outstanding to resolve it the way they did. Could could they be recommended for bravery awards in that situation? Uh, we'll wait through the full the full full process of assessment. Use of, use of force were used, so that is reviewed and scrutinised through independent people. That's normal processes, and. Um, you know, we'll talk about this because it, it is an Eastern matter. We'll talk about it in our management meetings on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, we'll look to commit all of this to um, paper and work out where we go with it. Can I confirm how many passengers were on the 26. And yep. where were they headed? Were they next to the Flinders Rangers? Flinders Rangers, yeah. Yep. Uh, no, I can't tell you that, no. But what I can tell you is, so uh, a senior officer at the scene actually made sure he um, had an opportunity to speak to all the passengers in isolation. He explained police actions, he explained the certain use of force that was used and made sure that he, um, in a way, um, comforted them around um, if they had any concerns about long-term uh, effects of OC spray. Um, uh, and they were offered counselling and support. And as a, as a district, Eastern District will reach out to them um, either tonight, tomorrow or during the week with our victim contact officers and we'll just make sure they're travelling okay. And if there's something we can do to help, we'll offer it. Can we ask you on this other topic? There was an arrest at Prospect overnight. Robbery, crash, arrest. I mean, is it lucky no members of the public were injured considering you know, what happened? 
Oh, look, uh, so that's, I believe, a Northern District matter. But what I can say is I'm aware that three people were arrested for some serious offending overnight. Um, and that occurred after a, um, you know, the vehicle was stopped and, and those three people were arrested. But uh, uh, the full circumstances of that matter, I'm not aware. Sure. Is youth crime, you know, and, and still a, a very big problem in Adelaide? Oh, um, so the, the circumstances of that event, mm. I really don't know the full, I don't know the full circumstances of it. I know that police successfully arrested the three offenders overnight and that's a good thing, yeah. Uh, look, I, I, you're really going to have to speak to Major Crash about that one, yeah. I, uh, as a district, we would have no involvement in that investigation, particularly when it occurred outside our district, yeah. yeah. Another one, a suspicious fire at uh, Flinders Park. Any links to tobacco wars or part of Operation Eclipse? So my understanding of that one is it occurred at a real estate agent on Grange Road, so that's, it doesn't link in with the Operation Eclipse um, MO. Um, but I am aware that Western District are seeking witnesses for that. So if anyone does know anything about that, they can reach out through Crime Stoppers. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and I, uh, yeah. So I believe there's a media release about that already, and um, and Western District are seeking witnesses. So are you aware that bus was able to be cleaned and passengers were able to leave on that same bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I know that they were working to decontaminate it. So, and, and yeah, the, 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 my understanding is everything at the scene that, so the incident occurred, but everything at the scene after that, so the moving back to, move, moving everything back to a normal state, the recovery phase, everyone from Franklin Street, Grants, Ambos, Fireys was outstanding um, teamwork. So it's uh, really encouraging. Yeah. And a lot of the passengers praise police for their efforts and and the action that they took, they, they fear, fear for their lives, and this guy obviously came out of the world went nuts. Yeah, and, and when the senior police officer spoke to people afterwards, he said that was um, it was really nice. They actually didn't really worry so much about themselves, but were more, more concerned about the police. So that was really nice to hear. But uh, it, conversely, we were more worried about them. So yeah. Also, a bit strange, but did he become naked through the con confrontation with police? Did he originally pull the bus closed? Yeah, it's my understanding he was clothed at the start and was may have lost some clothes during the struggle. Was that all of his clothes? Contamination? Yeah, so I, I need to work, confirm that because whether the Rambos took some off or not, I'm not sure. So, but, but I understand that at some point during the struggle, either he lost a shirt or his pants or something, which I suppose identifies how um, difficult it was to get him out of the seat. Bringing the four officers back to work, does that manage to know you're going to have to tell them before they can sort of come back on board? And yeah, so, the, um, so the, the dog handler was injured, punched as well, punched and kicked as well, and he's good to go. Um, a probationary constable, I believe, uh, was punched and kicked, and he's good to go. Uh, but we'll allow the two police officers that were taken to hospital time to recover. And, and as you can imagine, if they've suffered a significant assault, they may actually feel more pain tonight as opposed to now, so we'll let them make that decision later on. Would you describe the actions as heroic? Oh, I, I would describe... <laughs> I, look, their actions were staunch, their actions were um, determined, and their actions were professional, yeah. Thank you. Just to clarify really quickly, earlier did you say that the passengers were put on another bus and then you just put them back on the same bus? So they were removed from the bus, yep, yep and it's my understanding that they were going to organise another bus and then De decontaminate the bus, but it's my understanding from the information um, in the room that they've been able to decontaminate the bus and get those 26 passengers back on their tour. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good on you guys. Thank you.